Hello and welcome to another technology support video. My name is Greg Johnson and this is a brief uh, tutorial on how to use Norton Ghost 2003. It's a, a software program that's used to back up computers and restore them. Um, not just your data files, but all the programs, the operating system, everything. So it's a really useful tool to be familiar with, especially for technology support people, but even for just uh, the home user or a business um, client would like to uh, probably use a product like this for quickly restoring computers if needed. Hopefully it isn't needed, but um, in this case, these are computers that are loaned out, and it's nice to just freshen them up when they come back. So let's get right to it. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes because that's the limit on YouTube, <laughs> so um, where this video is ultimately destined for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the computer, and you'll need to follow me along quickly. You can always obviously pause and play this back, but this kind of goes at a pretty quick pace, and I can't really slow it down, uh, so just kind of pay attention. Um, as soon as I turn on the computer, there's going to be a message that comes up in the upper right-hand corner that says, Press F12 for the boot menu. And, you know, I wasn't even fast enough here. Um, I'm going to show that to you again. When it turns on, it says F12 for boot menu. You almost have to be pressing F12 before that screen even comes up because by the time you see it it's almost too late. So to give you an idea of how this works is you're gonna push the power button and then immediately start pressing F12. And now it says preparing one-time boot. These screens just flash by really quick. This is a Dell so F12 works on other computers you might need to press another key. So um, anyway we have a list here for this one-time boot and essentially what this is giving us is an option to choose what boot device we want. I have already opened up the drive. If you had not on your computer, you could do that now, but um, basically I've already opened up the drive and put this disk in. I did that ahead of time. Um, but you put in the Norton Ghost 2003 disk. I like to make backups of the software I use in case something gets scratched or broken or lost or whatever, and so I use the backup image. And I make a smaller disk. This one you can see is quite a bit smaller than a regular CD because I like it to fit in this little travel pouch with a USB cable, um, another product called a Cronus True Image Home 2010, and this small hard drive. Everything folds up, fits in a little case. It's very handy. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit about that disk. So you put your Norton Ghost CD in the drive, and this is a perfectly fine time to do that when you're at this boot menu. And then once the drive is fully inserted again, the disk is inserted, then you press the enter key on the keyboard to continue, and then it says press a key to boot from CD or DVD. So you have to push a key right away, or else it's going to... There are a number of points along the way here, like when you need to press the F12, when you need to press a key to continue, etc. You have to really keep your eyes on the screen and do what it's saying to do. So anyway, here I've got five seconds remaining. I have to go down and choose load USB 2.0 drivers from this list. So I do that, I press enter, and then at this point you want to look here, it should be loading ID equals whatever is installed successfully, um, and the rest of these screens are just going to scroll by, and you may even see some error messages. You can just ignore that, don't worry about that. Well while all this is happening I do want to recap because I know I went pretty quick. Step one is push F12 as soon as you turn on the computer that brings up that boot list, uh, bootable devices list, right? Step two, choose CD-ROM from the list and make sure you have your Ghost CD in. Step three, choose USB 2.0. If that doesn't work, it may be that you're on an older computer that um, just can't accommodate USB 2.0, so you'll have to choose USB 1.0. Um, but hopefully USB 2.0 will work. It's much faster if, if you can work with it. So once it gets through all of these um, messages here, at the very end, it might say something like, no drive letters were added, uh, but in fact, you know, your hard drive should have been um, recognized at the very beginning. And at this point, you'll type on the keyboard, CD, um, actually, I'm sorry, go back. You'll type on the keyboard C and then colon. And I'll just show it to you on the screen as well. So C colon, and then press the Enter key. And what this is going to do is switch you over to the C drive and then you'll type in CD space support and then again press the enter key so that's saying um, change into the directory called support the support folder or directory and then at this point type ghost 
and the Ghost program will start. If it's the first time that Ghost has run on the computer, you'll get a message indicating that, and it'll say, you know, do you want to um, allow Ghost to run on this machine? And it needs to do something to prepare the hard drive for that, but it, it shouldn't alter your programs or data at all. So now this welcome message comes up, and this is just the normal welcome message for Ghost. You can use your mouse now to click on OK. And I'm going to, from a local disk, I want to restore this computer from an image. Okay, So that's what I'm choosing with the mouse. And go ahead and click on From Image. And then you go up to this drop-down list right here. And you'll want to pick your external drive. In my case, I have it named um, LMC DOS 80. So I'll click on that. And keep in mind, unlike Windows, these folders, you just click on them once. I have a folder system that I use. I'll, I'll have a folder on the drive called Images. And within there, I have a manufacturer folder. So in this case, Dell for Dell Images. So I'll click on that. And then you'll see I have lots of um, models listed here. And very often the case is that the model line, like Dimension or Inspiron or Latitude, um, they have unique model numbers within the line. So you maybe don't even have to have a folder for latitude since you know there is no uh, Inspiron you know, D600, it's only a latitude. But whatever you want to do, have kind of an organized folder structure, and I'll, and I'll show you why that is here in just a minute. Um, so this is a latitude D600. So I'm going to choose the D600 folder. And there is a previous um, backup image that I've stored on here. Now keep in mind, having multiple backup images of multiple computers, it's the kind of thing you would do for a business or an enterprise or an institution um, where you have the, the site license for all of this. You can't just um, you know, create a computer image and then start giving it away to people. Okay, So you do have to be a little bit mindful about licensing. But uh, the software that I'm installing here is all licensed for uh, this computer, so we're in good shape. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click once on the image there. And now Norton Ghost is going to ask me, what's the destination drive? Now, you want to be really careful with this. You don't want to you know, erase your external hard drive that has all your images on it, right? You want to make sure you're choosing the right destination drive. And in this case, I'm familiar enough with my external drive. It's the 80 gig. The internal drive is a 28. So I'm going to say, yeah, that's fine. Usually the defaults are, are going to be OK. And now it says, well, how do you want to uh, allocate disk space? I usually go ahead and accept the defaults here, so I'm just going to say OK. There's already a diagnostic partition with Dell, and I'm just going to leave that alone. And then it says, do you want to proceed with the restore? And I'll say yes. And when this is all done, it's pretty amazing here. It says it's going to take about 11 minutes. Uh, now it's down to 8 minutes, 50 seconds. Um, this is really what's amazing about the Ghost program, is that something that would normally take, if you would just sit down and manually go through the steps, could normally take several hours to download all the Windows updates, to install all the software, to you know install the programs, configure them, set up your printer, set up your network, all of that stuff. Um, you can take you know several days worth of effort and create one of these backups that can be it can restore your entire computer in just a few minutes. Um, we're running out of time on this video, but in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about creating a backup. We're starting right now with restoring a system. Um, but, you know, once a system's restored, you would want to update with the latest Windows updates and make sure your virus software is up to date uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and, of course, uh, typically what you do with these images is you want to start out with a, a brand new machine that doesn't have a lot of data on it, that doesn't have any data on it, hopefully. Um, because the image backup is not something you're going to run every day or every week or whatever. It's, you know, kind of the system in its pristine state um, as it is originally configured. That's what you want to do. Uh, because the programs don't really change that much other than just basic program updates. What does change is your data over time. So that's about it for now. And I appreciate you uh, taking time to watch. Let me know if you have any questions. And otherwise, this is Greg Johnson signing out. Look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.